throughout my entire life I've always been involved in some new adventure. I always like to learn something new and then become as good at it as I can possibly be. I got involved in it because again of reading articles and finding out that the decline in the monarch butterfly population and so when I read things like that it's like okay what can I do to help is there anything that I can do and so I started finding out yeah there are certain things you can do like you know planting milkweed because that's the only uh, uh, plant that butterflies will lay their eggs on it's the only thing that the caterpillars will eat and so I just started kind of investigating what can I do to help out the butterflies and so I started very small a very small uh, patch of milkweed and found out that monarchs miraculously found it and so I expanded it out then from there. As they came into our plants we would gather them up and then take them inside and set up aquariums and different little things where we could try to protect them until they turned chrysalis and then go into butterflies. So this year we took in 30 and by the time we saw the caterpillars and going into chrysalis we found that um, several of them had already been gotten to by spiders, grand daddy long legs, wasps and so because our plan was for them to just uh, be go to adulthood outside, but we saw that they were being killed, and so we decided to set up something on the inside. And so we, our success rate this year was 44%, going from chrysalis to adulthood, and so we felt pretty happy about that. And the time of year that was happening, also uh, what's known as the super monarch, and this is the, the time of year when the monarchs are the ones that make it to the uh, central Mexico, to the mountains of central Mexico is where they uh, go to every year and so this that in August when we were getting them and in September it's what's called the super monarch because they're a bigger monarch and they are the ones that instinctively fly back to Mexico. We do name the butterflies. Uh, we started in alphabetical order and so when we'd have one or two we'd write down the dates, we'd write down male or female and then we would name the butterflies and then we take them to a, our local library that happens to have a butterfly garden in the back of it, and we take them there and release them. So, but yes, we do name them. It's read a lot of articles and heard a lot of things in the news about bees and their plight and what's happening to them, the bee population is going down. And, and so I just started reading about how can you help bees and one of the ways was to you know, raise bees and give them a place where they could safely live and so that's how I got started in it. And so I just started reading everything I could get my hands on about beekeeping and, and started, started that way, just by wanting to help the bees. So far I've kept all the honey. I've given a lot of it away. I've not sold any of it. Um, it's been, I've been at it for four years and in this area you really have to catch it at the right time as far as the weather. And last year we had a wet spring, a cool spring, and so the flowers stayed around a lot longer than normal. And so I did get quite a bit of honey last year and probably half of that I've given away to people. So at this point it just, the honey that I've, that I have uh, harvested, I I've just kept. Uh, fly fishing for about 30 years ago or so. Uh, grew up in Indiana. Fly fishing is normally associated with trout fishing. There's not a lot of trout in Indiana, but I picked up fly fishing, my brother and I, and we're fishing for, in ponds for bluegill and just started to learn something new. And so that's how I got into it and I found out that I just absolutely love fly fishing and continue doing it today. The, the main difference is that regular fishing, you take something heavy on the end of a line with a hook and you fling it out there and the weight of that carries the bait, lure, whatever it is, out to where the fish are. Fly fishing is, the fly are very, they mimic insects and they're very, very small, very, very light and so it's the weight of the line and the, the, uh, the way the rod bends, that's what actually presents that fly. So as opposed to something weighty carrying it out there, it's the weight of the actual line that is bending the rod and then sending the fly out there so that when it lands, 
You throw a worm out there, it splashes. You put a fly out there, it gently lands lightly on, on the water. And so you're imitating different insect lives above water or below water. Well, I always loved reading books, and I always loved that books took me somewhere uh, when I was reading them. And so it's always been within me for years that I wanted to write my own book. And so several times I've started many different books. But then I finally got to the point of, okay, what do I really know? What do I know about? And fly fishing is one of the things I know. And I've been to several places in fly fishing. And so I decided to start putting together my experiences and kind of compiled them together. And then that turned into a book. It's becoming bigger all the time. It started by a Special Forces uh, veteran in Florida and he has he makes the bags and so on they create has created these events and so they are held all over the world um well, i attended one here in december in st louis and so there's so it's becoming bigger all the time but yes there are there are many events a lot of them in the united states but they're also around the world i actually got involved and started doing and practicing back in may of this last year, so 2019 in May, I started rucking. Um, it's a physical challenge, and I'm very involved in working out, and it's just one more aspect of working out. When I heard about it and what it does and everything it's involved in, it, I decided that uh, I would participate in it just as an, another part of a workout program. Well, this is a ruck bag, and it's more than just a backpack because there's certain things on it as far as the way that it's built the different handles it's kind of advertised as a gym on your back and what makes the ruck bag is on the inside of course i have my water bladder for hydration purposes but then also inside here there's a pouch and within there are weight plates and this particular one is a 20 pound weight plate. Now when I'm training to actually do a ruck event, I'll wear 30 pound rucks. And I'll stick that down inside of here. And on their events, you have to have at least 20 pounds in there. And so then you just throw it on your back and you walk. And that's basically what rucking is. Now some of these events, like the one that I attended in St. Louis, there's a lot more to it. It's more than just walking. There's about two hours worth of exercise that you're doing with the bag. Could be holding the bag over your head, doing uh, uh, deep knee lunges, or on your back doing flutter kicks holding up, running with it on your back. Uh, and also we had, during the Ruck event, we had 80, 100, and 120 pound sandbags. They would also, while we're carrying this, we'd also take those and put them on our shoulders and we walked, that particular one was seven miles to do. So, so this is what a ruck bag is, and it looks like a regular backpack, but it's got some modifications in it. And then it just goes on the shoulder, and then you cinch the straps down, and then a sternum strap, and you just walk. And then if you get thirsty, you've got your water to drink. So that's rucking.